Today is Tuesday, March 12th, Tuesday of the first week of Lent. We have some anonymous donor out there who decides to occasionally send us food. Right now we're doing our 40 Cans for Lent campaign, and they just shipped via Amazon 40 cans to us. So tonight is the first session of our Live Christ, Share Christ five-part retreat. I'll be doing the presentation, and the title of the topic is Jesus the Messiah. We Catholics do believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, but over and above that, we also believe, too, that he became human. When I was in the seminary, we discussed the divinity and humanity of Jesus in our Christology class. It was interesting because it seemed then that they were trying to overhumanize him. Now, I got to the seminary by the 90s, but in the 70s, I think this overhumanization of Jesus was rampant. A lot of priests were getting into the parishes and kind of preaching this overly human Jesus. Yes, he was fully man. Yes, he was fully divine. And we can't separate the two. We need to keep them both complete, entire, and whole. All right, it's a Tuesday. Time to start getting ready for Mass. Today we have our devotions following Mass to St. Anthony of Padua. St. Anthony is the patron saint of lost things. Today I'm going to pray particularly that St. Anthony help us bring back lost souls. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your Son. Hi, how are you, Father Peter? I'm very well, thank Good. you. Good, okay. I'm disappointed I didn't win anything on the raffle. <laughs> You're a lot of other people. <laughs> so I think I'm going to nickname today Tech Help Tuesday. Every now and then you also have to be an electrical engineer. This is a uh, transmitter pack for our sound system in the church. And right up on the top here, there is this little mute switch. And that mute switch is actually um, added by the company who puts in the system. It's not original. Well, every now and then, there's a soldered wire in there that comes loose, and all of a sudden, it just stops working. So you have to take the thing apart, re-solder the wire, put the thing back into place. Hopefully, the super glue that I put in there will keep it in place, and it'll continue to work. You know, when I was younger, there was some things that my father kind of insisted on. And among them were getting to know the tools. This is all getting me to reflect a little bit and to think about prudence. Well, today I've decided to do a little bit of a retro. Here I am in the office where I used to do the credo with Tim Haynes. You can see everything pretty much looks the same, except I've pretty much taken the studio lights out and everything else. And actually, this microphone isn't doing anything. Just had this nice, long, extensive phone call with an Apple technician. This is like the fourth or fifth time I have a computer that has been acting up. And in December, I tried to have it repaired. They brought it in. They did all sorts of nice stuff. But when I started to use it again, it just kept locking up. It's just, and we figured out, I got it all figured out and the different things as to what causes it to happen. But now they're going to have to escalate it and get in engineers and all this other stuff. And so I've been spending some time trying to get this thing fixed. As we spend some time reviewing what has been going on these past few years especially, and when we think about how many failures there have been, failures top to bottom, both in the church and in society. So one of the things I believe during our Lenten journey that we really need to emphasize is the role that the cardinal virtues play in our life. I think we forget that these cardinal virtues are powers given to us, but must be cultivated. These are the ones that we educate ourselves in, that we immerse ourselves in. But often what we end up doing is just kind of plodding along and hoping that the right thing happens. Today in particular, I was reflecting a lot on this virtue of prudence. It's the one that we refer to as the charioteer of the virtues. Basically, what prudence does is it gives us the power to discern truth. Now, in this particular vlog, I like talking a lot about trying to live that truth in this age of relativism. But prudence itself is what we need, the power that we need to do the good. But to do the good, we have to figure out what the good is. 
Prudence then is that process that we put ourselves through again and again, reflecting before we act, thinking before we do something, making sure that what it is conforms with the reality as established by God. Yeah, there have been times in my own life when I've recognized that I really wasn't exercising, really wasn't forming this virtue of prudence. What I mean by that is, you know, sometimes we just don't want to really know. We've kind of grown comfortable with a certain way or a certain thing. And so we really just kind of let it fly for a little while, let it go so that, so that we just can keep doing it. I think the virtue of prudence helps us an awful lot to remove doubt. See, when I was younger, there was a lot of times I would just kind of pass by things. I would just kind of say, well, I don't know, I'm not sure. But that's a form of doubt that happens in my mind. And I like that doubt because as long as I'm in doubt, well, then you go ahead and do what you want to do. See, sometimes we're just guided by our passions, our desires, our wants. But it's prudence that helps us to take those desires and focus them according to the will of God, the plan of God. I'm sure you've noticed in your own life that there are certain actions you commit that as soon as you've committed them, something kicks in, something lets you know something's wrong. I think one of the phrases that has long been lost today and it has such an intimate relationship with all of the cardinal virtues, but particularly prudence, are the words self-mastery. I am to be a master of myself. I am to be someone who knows and is convicted to God, but also knows what is right from wrong. And I have to be the one to take possession of that. I have to take control of that. That's why our Lenten disciplines are so extremely important, particularly disciplines of fasting or penitential practices. These are the things that we do that help us to gain that self-mastery, that help us to gain that self-control. Too many people will just live by their passions. They'll just do whatever their passions are calling them to do. But I've always said the same thing. If I let my emotions make decisions, I can guarantee you it's going to make a really bad decision. So don't live by the passions. Don't live by the emotions. Use this process called right reason. Use this gift of prudence to discern what is right, what is good, what is true, and then live that truth. Sin weakens us. Sin takes down rather than builds up. Now, when I've lived a good, prudent, virtuous life, when I do things by the will of God, when I follow all that he has asked me to do, when I live as that child of freedom, then truly, I'm not feeling constricted at all. I'm feeling freed. And I do need to emphasize the fact that these human virtues, these moral virtues, are gained by human powers. These are things that we do to correct ourselves, to grow in holiness, to grow in goodness, so that we can truly be that person that God wants us to be. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, I call upon you now. Send out your Holy Spirit over all those who hear these words. May they live that virtue of prudence, that gift of holiness. May they receive from you all the grace necessary to live a moral life. May they, through these virtues, grow ever closer to you and one day reign with you in the kingdom where you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I need to get a haircut. I think I'm going to set up a, an appointment with my hair cutter. His name is David. He's a great guy. He knows his stuff like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, hi, David. It's Father Peter. I'm pretty good, thanks. Due for a bit of a trim if you got some time tomorrow. Uh, 10, 10, 30, what's good for you? 10 is good for me. I will see you at 10. Oh, yeah, perfect. I will be there then. I'll see you. Bye. Strange how the brain works. I was just sitting there and I actually noticed how kind of bushy my hair is getting. So I said, I better give him a call and set it up. I mean, believe it or not, this room is actually an old office. It's a full-sized office, but I'm squeezed into one corner over here. Uh, hi, Father Peter. <laughs> it's getting to be that time in the afternoon where I'm kind of bouncing from one thing to the next and I'm deciding how much coffee I need to get me through the rest of the day. Hi, Father.